This, uh, this is a copy of Screw Magazine. I can't find the cover of it. I did get this. Let me see the cover. There's the cover, right? Cover of Screw Magazine, right? Okay. I'll give that back to you. What, are you selling those? You got enough, enough of them? Let me show you some of the nice ads in here. Mistress Die. The Golden Die. The devastating six-foot platinum blue-eyed tattooed blonde is now going to be your personal mistress. I am the best equipped mistress in New York City. I have many exotic, erotic torture toys for us to play with. Once I allow you to gaze into my cold Icelandic eyes, you will be mine forever. And I've never been accused of being a prude gang, but but when I see the battle of the sexes being fought with whips and chains by pudgy perverts in rubber suits, I kind of begin to wonder. For some people, spike collars, black leather, and cat of nine tails have replaced roses, chocolates, and, and sweet nothings. Sadomasochism, S&M, is it sex with a twist or twisted sex? Next on the Morton Downey Show. <laughs> before I get out there and beat you. Now, I want you to descend with... Oh, you like my new collar? Huh? Got it from my dog, Spike. Uh, I want you, if you will, for just a second, our studio audience here, you folks at home, descend with me for a minute into the hellish world of s and Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Would you, would you bring that back to that lovely couple that was sitting there? Huh? How the hell? How the hell would you like to drop into Ma uh, McDonald's and have them sit down next to you? Huh? That's, uh... <laughs> I, I gotta introduce you to the Prince of Slime, the sleazeball king of the world, Mr. Al Goldstein. How are you, Al? How you doing, Mr. Downey? All right, hey. Al. No, no, it's just like my bar mitzvah, and I haven't even spoken yet. That's Jesus. right. That's how your own relatives treated <laughs> you, right? And they look like that audience out they there. They all wanted the pen and pencil set back. Now, Al, in addition to endorsing every perverted sexual activity imaginable, uh, one of your personal favorites is S&M. What possible redeeming value does S&M have for our society? Well, first of all, for me, the world of S&M is, is a world of theater. The Canadian is the balcony. It's playing out uh, a drama, playing out a scenario. If I want to be a masochist, frankly, I've been married three times like you, I prefer marriage. I prefer, I prefer to that one of my wives running up charges at Bloomingdale's. That is humiliation. But the sexual world of S&M is one of tension, of provoking, of theater. It's sort of Vanna White without a wheel. That's what S&M is? To yeah, you? yeah. I mean, S&M is to me uh, beating the pants off someone and, and having them say they like it. Like, I mean, my brother told me once he was out with a girl and the girl wouldn't let him take off her clothes unless he would hurt her. And I said, what the hell did you say? He said, I told her I never hurt anyone in my life. And she kept insisting on it. He said, so I asked her if I could slam her hand in the door, if that'd be all right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a pretty tough what, way to, to the, go to get yourself a little tail. It, it's a world of, 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 of authority and power. It's, 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 it's acting. It's, it's theater. And, is and it theater I for the it. person who really digs it? I mean, what redeeming value is there? I spoke to a prostitute in uh, Las Again? Vegas when I was Again? doing Yeah, well... Incidentally, uh, with did 20 you bucks, you made sure. Huh? Huh? <laughs> he turned uh, it down. I, sp I spoke to her in Las Vegas, and I said, "You have a." She had a le legal brothel out there. I said, "What are some of the weird things that happened to you in that brothel?" She said, "I've got one very important politician in Las Vegas who comes in once a week. Get this, strips down naked, gets on all fours, and she has to take ostrich feathers, 
shove him up his little butt, all right, and pet him and say, nice bird. And when she says, nice bird, the guy gets off. I mean, this, is, this isn't thick. No, what it is, it's a, it's a response from the world. Of, and that guy of, must have had a screwed up mother that got him off. Or religion, or religion, Catholicism, to a large degree, the authoritarian religions that make us sex-hating is why we feel only alive if we feel we're doing wrong. Why is masturbation something you and I know a lot about? Why is masturbation... <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Check down these palms and you'll see. Why is masturbation... It's true. He admits it. He admits it. Down it's an old wives' tale. Besides, I shaved them. <laughs> okay. But why is masturbation called self-abuse? Because we come from... Who calls from, it self-abuse? Uh, the Catholic Church. They used to call it self-abuse. I'm, a, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Roman Catholic. But, you, but you're a runaway Roman Catholic. You've been married. You're out, you're out of the flock now. No, you're I'm not. not no, I'm not, because I got an annulment. I'm back in the flock again. Well, I, I'm, I'm surprised. Back in the flock again. Okay. And now, I still masturbate. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's a good man, right? I'm yeah. glad you do. I mean, I'm glad you're glad you're, I do. What's you're, the whole show going to be on masturbation? Listen, your wife saw you in daylight. That's the only action you're going to get. <laughs> that ain't funny. That ain't funny. Listen, give the guy credit. He's got good lines around his eyes, across his forehead, and sim. Uh, let, me, let me go on. Uh, uh, let's talk to Steve just a second. Steve, what do you make of uh, Mr. Goldsperm? Uh, Goldsperm. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh... Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Mort, uh, he's proven to me tonight that S&M stands for Sick Minds. That's what it stands for. <laughs> Mort, Mort, I've maintained over the past few years, based on uh, people's testimony, the law enforcement effort that we've uh, strived with over the years, that there's an evil empire growing in this nation, an empire out to destroy the moral fiber of the country, of the family. And I'd say that uh, he's part and parcel of this evil empire. All right, but what about the right to the First Amendment now? And let, let's face it, I happen to defend Al's right, the First Amendment. I don't want to see this, this newspaper at eye level for a five- or six-year-old in a public uh, newsstand, all right? I don't mind, personally, I don't mind it being sold if some adult is uh, stupid enough to want to buy it. <laughs> Mort, if Al, if, if Al gets off by doing things like that under his roof, that's his thing. But the problem comes into... Uh, well, but maybe there's other people who want to do it under the roof and they don't know where to find it. For instance, they don't know that they can come worship the most beautiful but mistress Mort, in the it's land. Gone, it's gone beyond that where they're calling the this... The Miss Michelle, 42 double D. <laughs> they're calling this an alternative to lifestyle. Can't walk. And the, the Attorney General's Commission on Pornography, oh, with testimony, the Al, Attorney anything General that has been to... Indicted, is going to be indicted momentarily. You look so macho no, in the dazzle. Are Al, you a real cop? Al, Are you out of the s and club with this macho outfit? Cut it out! Cut it out! You hypocrite! You, you have to ask me. Is he going to say, Al, he is a real policeman. Is he Al, real police? you have you to ask me if I'm a real... You, you like Al, you, could you, you zip like, it up a minute? No, You're not in a courtroom. You like your nightstick, don't you? You're in love with your nightstick. I know your type, baby. I know your type. Hey, uh, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you, all right? If Al Goldstein hasn't had his ass kicked yet, our next guest will do it for him, and he'll love this. <laughs> Martin Downey. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, in incidentally, I forgot to introduce you in the last segment to uh, police officer uh, Steve Rogers, who was at Loudmouth 1 at Loudmouth 2. Uh, you all, of course, have already met uh, on a previous show our guest, uh, Dr. Ernest Vandenhag, a law professor at Fordham University and a psychoanalyst for 25 years. Now, hey, Mort. Mort, joining, Mort, me, Mort. joining me at home base, uh, let me introduce to you Ava Terrell. She is a dominatrix. And let me... All right. Now, there might be some folks at home who don't know what that is. Ava, as a professional dominatrix, would you please tell our audience what professional service you are rendering to the public, what a dominatrix okay. is? I advertise in New York Magazine, not in his scandalous paper. <laughs> you think his is scandalous? Yes, I think it's very crude, very vulgar, and... Uh, Can we... May I ask you a question? Because I have been fooled before with people with masks and hair. Uh -huh. I don't want you to expose your face. Would you open your coat for just a second so I can be sure you're a woman? 
Yes. I just, I just, I did want to be sure. I did want to be sure I wasn't. I did want to be sure I wasn't being flim flam. Easy, babe. You'll be okay. Cool it. <laughs> now, what what uh, services do you render? Well, I specialize in psychodrama that deals with fantasies of dominance and submission. I usually don't start off hitting people. First, I work on their psychology, and I want them to want to be hit, if that is what the game is. <laughs> Very often, a person... Are there a lot of people who want to be hit? Yes, it's a tremendous amount of people. I get maybe... Do you have any famous customers? Phone calls a month. Do you have any famous customers? I don't want you to reveal their names. No. Any politicians? Ronald Reagan? No. no. no <laughs> any actors or actresses? Yes. Actors and actresses uh -huh, yeah. you have. Uh, Any, most uh, of them are lawyers. And, most uh, of them are lawyers. That figures they're lawyers. beating the hell out of everyone else. They might be beating out of them. Yeah. Any, uh, magazine publishers? No, no. But many journalists. Many journalists, many journalists yeah. like yeah. this, too, huh? But on people with strict religious backgrounds. Many Orthodox Jews, many Catholics, people that have a strong repression. You ever work on who... Jimmy Swagger? No. <laughs> but he needs it more than anyone. He needs it he's more than the anyone. worst hypocrite I've ever seen. And, and so, what, what do you build up to? Now, I, I come into you and I say, uh, uh, <coughs> Ava, uh, I, uh, I, I've got this fantasy. Okay. If you would walk in like that, I wouldn't let you into my space. Okay, how do I, I have to walk in? Nor would I let anybody in. I have to walk smoke. in with great con. No, I can't smoke? No one can smoke in my space. No, no beat up sex office. for me. <laughs> 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 But if All you right. walk in as a proper gentleman, as you <laughs> try to do at this moment, proper gentleman. I, would consider, I would consider you for a consultation. Now, what, how do you consider? I call you, all you right? You have to be presentable. I you call be, you. Yeah. I, I'm dressed nicely. I'm mm -hmm, presentable. Mm -hmm. All right. I call you. I uh -huh. say, I'd like to talk to you about your services. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you say to me? First of all, I want to see if you uh, speak well, mm -hmm. if you present yourself well, mm -hmm. if you are clean, if you don't smell bad. Mm -hmm. This herpes, your, your this herpes sir, wouldn't <laughs> drive you away. Um... You see, there is no, no, it wouldn't drive me away because there's no close physical contact uh, in the sessions I no do. No close physical contact. No, no. There is no right. sexual, I want to stress that, there is no right. sexual contact. Right. Okay, well, let's, okay. Get, let's, get, let's get to the okay. meeting. Let's okay. get to the meeting. <laughs> no. It's no. already getting boring, right? Okay. No, there are many people who prostitute who also do these things, but that's something else. I'm not against people who have sex for money, it's just not what I want to do. Okay. A dominatrix. No, but you don't call yourself a prostitute. Of course not. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see, no a one ever penetrates you, has sex with you. Absolutely never. You see, a dominatrix has to be. Well, hold on a second. A dominatrix has to be a man's unobtainable dream. If like she sees, wife. you see, if <laughs> if she has sex with him, this dream is gone. It it becomes something else. It's a different kind of relationship. <laughs> is that, and that's what the whole bit is. Yes. And so, there are guys like that. Well, really? Are, you know, it goes back to the origin, the etymology of the word costly love, which was the unobtainable. Romanticizing love was to put it so idealized. These are people... Uh, uh, the, and you're not telling me that's sick. I mean, that's John Hinckley. Yeah, why don't you Jody tell him, Al, about John gerbiling. Hinckley with yeah, Jody Foster. Why don't you tell him about... Suddenly, 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 su
evidence itself in other manifestations I, if she didn't do at least what she does? Well, it may get worse by what she does. It may get better. I have no idea. It depends on the individual. Have you ever case. had it done, Doctor? It's certainly not a cure. <laughs> have you ever had it done? Well, it's the same thing as a person. I say he's an alcoholic. You give him right. something to drink. It's not going to have, have you it ever? Have you ever allowed yourself to be a submissive man? In other words, yeah, go ahead, honey. Tie me to the bedpost. <laughs> no, just I, one arm, though, because I, I want to be able to get I'm it. I'm sorry, I've never been in that situation. Well, but I have. Do you want to be? <laughs> I want to tell you he's against s and M. He's an authoritarian personality, as Dudley do right over here. This was the last, this was the last defender of Richard Milhouse uh, Nixon. Uh, What's wrong with Richard Nixon? Oh, he, come on. He's a convicted felon. Not a convicted felon. When Big Mouth you have the quiets down, I'd like to share with you something with that the nice professor Buster. touched on. Uh, well, something that the professor ahead, touched on. Officer. Many of the people who are involved in sadomasochism, many of them are drawn into this particular type of, of crime. I mean, let's not make it look like all of these people enjoy being beaten. Maybe Al enjoys being beaten, <laughs> but all of these people do not enjoy being beaten. You get people, they have, here's their recruitment procedure. They'll put an ad in the paper for a young kid to become a model. They'll take some legitimate photographs. Then what they'll do is flatter her that she's gonna become a big movie star. Then they'll begin to coerce her into committing these sexual acts on film. What about gerbling? Didn't you have a... Yeah, gerbling. Let's talk about gerbling. <laughs> okay, Al? Let's talk about Let's gerbling. Talk. Will you please... No, no, what is this? This is not a monologue. <laughs> 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 tell, me, tell me about the little gerbils, okay, all right? These all right. cute little things. Al, you'd love me to put handcuffs getting, on you. You get all psyched up. You're getting you. hot with gerbils. You're gerbils. hot with gerbils. <laughs> I've learned through investigations, uh, Mort, that many of these people, and this is how sick and depraved this is, will take a toilet paper cylinder, just like the one I have here, and they'll insert it in the rectal area of a human being, and they'll send a gerbil down the tunnel into the intestine, and they will be beaten. They will be beaten now, uh, Mort. These people are beaten, and you know when you get hit, you, you tighten up, well, they're beaten to a point that they squirt the gerbil out. And the gerbil kind of looks like Al. That's what the gerbil looks like. I love it. I love it. This. And these are the things that are not Dr. told. Dr. Rogers, this is a real story. This is not baloney. This is fact. It yes. happens. And Mort, Al, does it happen? Not in his own, in his own dimension. Happen? You're a psychotic. Does Let me happen? tell you something. This is not Wild Kingdom. What's the matter? This is not Mutual Oham. What the? This is not the Bronx. Let me, ask you, let me ask Ava. Ava, have you ever had a request to uh, put a gerbil up someone's rectum? A doctor? No, absolutely never. Never, never, never. never, never, never. Ever oh, had a request to give them an enema? Yes, I have. You, a a yes. request to give them an enema? A doctor's fantasy. Now, when I do the interview what, with what people, kind of a fantasy is that? I want to point out, I sort out first who is a psychotic, and I send them to gentlemen like this one, uh -huh. and who is only after a sexual kick, they should also see someone else, and someone who is sincere about really living a fantasy should come and see me or one of the women that I promote, which I promote well, different... Uh, well, what is the fantasy of wanting an enema? Well, so I even had men who want to experience childbirth. They want to have their stomach filled up with water so that they can imagine that they have a child inside and they want to expel this. Send them to the to local bar and let them drink a six-pack. <laughs> who does Ava work on, huh? You'll meet him next. Stand by. <laughs> Enough is enough. Enough is enough. We screwed around with this crap long enough. It's time we get to the bottom of this. It ain't healthy. It ain't healthy. I don't care what anyone says. Officer, let me ask you a question. Al, Ava have said that this is carrying out a fantasy, that there's no danger in it, no harm. Uh, what are some of the studies that you have shown, some of the case histories that you've studied? Well, there's no question that uh, they're absolutely wrong. There is definitely uh, a factor in... Give me a case history. Well, let me just read something to you. A testimony right. of a woman uh, before the Attorney General's Commission on Pornography. My husband had a large collection of bizarre S&M and bondage porn that he kept in his dresser. He read the material and acted out the scenes he saw in the photos. He tied me and my children to our beds, beat us, and nearly killed us. Now, that's the scenario 
of many, many people who are uh, victimized by this type of trash. And that's what it is, Al. It's is, trash. Is that, is, that, uh, is that the exception or is that the rule? That's it's becoming true. the rule. It's, it's becoming hey, the is rule. It, I mean, you work in this all the time. We're going to talk to a couple of gentlemen who are submissive men, all right? That's definitely an exception. It's very sad to hear that uh, this gentleman believes that uh, it is the opposite. I'm sorry is that the name spiritual in your mind? I find it very spiritual, very right, spiritual. enlightening. Now, here's a man of God, all right? Aside yeah. from being He's a policeman, right. he is a minister. He's right. The only religion on the face of the earth that supports SMM, S M is Satanism. You're right. It's spiritual on the wrong side of the track. <laughs> Let me go, let me go to these gentlemen behind the screen. They are being safeguarded behind the screen and their voice has been changed by a harmonizer because one of them is a very famous media star. So, let's start with Mr. X. <laughs> and you'll notice, and you'll notice Boggs is still out here, all right? Go so, uh, Don't worry, I was concerned about that, too. Uh, Mr. X, are you there, sir? Yes. How are you doing, Mark? Brian, thank you. It's my understanding that you derive great satisfaction from the treatment of a woman like uh, Ms. Uh, Charles. Do you yourself uh, consider yourself sexually well-adjusted? Yeah, I understand my fantasies, and I only choose to act them out with a consenting partner. Does your fellow. wife consent? I live with a woman. She knows what I'm into. We participate sometimes, and sometimes we don't. There's more to a relationship than just sex. All right, and uh, you, otherwise you have normal, regular sex. Are you able to, are you able to reach orgasm through normal sex? Yes. Do you reach orgasm faster through your fantasy sex with uh, Ava? In my fantasies, I prefer not to have orgasm. It takes your away fantasies from my don't have orgasm. to please the woman. You only wish to please the woman? That's right. All right, Mr. Y, are you with us? I'm here, Mr. Downey. All right, Mr. Y, without compromising your identity, could you give us a short personal profile? I am a heterosexual male of somewhat cons over consenting age into the things that most men are into, and uh, I'm a businessman in this area. I think that suffices it. All right. And you're married? I'm married. Do you have children? I have. Yes, I do. Does your marriage partner and your children know of your fantasies? My children do not. My wife, yes. Your wife knows of them. Does she accept them as normal, sir? No. She does not. Well, is she willing to participate in those fantasies with you? No. If she were, would she be the partner you'd want to participate with? No. Why? <laughs> Why? What is she physically or mentally lacking that would not help bring about fruition to your fantasy. She does not have that certain dominant persona, shall we say, that I need and uh, like. In only, only in your fantasy do you need to be dominated, and is that domination just a sexual domination? Or is it one that you would also like if you had an employee who came in and said to you, Mr. X, I want a raise. I'm tired of it. Sit down. Don't tell me you're not going to give me one. Would that guy get a raise from you? No, I am a dominant man. That's one of my, I won't say problems. It's one of the reasons I like to go the reverse route, I suppose. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a woman. I, it's a great, uh, great pleasure in being dominated by a certain kind of woman. What does that fantasy cost you, Mr. Y? X amount of dollars an hour. X amount doesn't tell me how much. Oh, it could range from 70 to 200. 70 to 200 an hour? Yes. Ava, what do you charge? Well, my psychiatrist costs that much, too, and somewhat more. I charge 200 an hour. You charge 200 an hour. But I very rarely see people now. I mainly promote other people who I have trained. You promote other people, so you're a, uh, a, a, a manager. Yes. No, I'm not at all a madam. Entrepreneur. No. Entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm a teacher. I have lectured at New York University about these questions. I intend to maybe speak at New the York Learning University? Agent, the, yes, New York University, mm -hmm. to a group of students that are future educators of this country. The future ed educators of this country, huh? 
That's nice. In the health That's education nice. department, yes. Let me ask you something. What would you do, Steve, if you found out uh, she was a teacher uh, to one of your kids in school and she was into this stuff? What would you do? I'd take one of those gerbils and shove them down her throat. <laughs> What would you do, Al, if one of your kids, uh, seven or eight years old, was in her class and you found out what she did? Wait a minute, you're asking, after Nazi like Steve responded. Wait, no, no, Steve, Steve, call him, Steve. You didn't tell me that you were going to have the three students on this program. You are all Larry and Curly. Steve, cool it. Cool it, Steve. What I would do with a teacher would be simply the question is, is she a good school teacher? The privacy of her own life, I don't care if somebody believes in your, in your BS. As long as the person performs the job, if you're a good cop, that's fine. Well, if if person a good teacher, Steve, Steve, this is not your show. Steve, Alan, this is not your, your show. show. Leave, if a person let's can leave change their lifestyle in their home, hey, it is a free country. I'll agree with you. That's, for but you, that's a concession. That's amazing. alternative lifestyle is affecting society. Steve, this what report about the is one of many, Steve, which you have no nonsense. conception of what it's all about. Steve, could yeah, you mean, Edwin Meese is under how many investigations? Al, no, no commission testimony. And it's going to happen no indictments. No indictments. Al, commission I mean, testimony. how dishonest can a guy be who only has 61 grand to put in a blind trust after 30 years of service? Commission testimony <laughs> from a young girl. Did you, see, on, Al, did you testify at the Meese Commission? I was a witness there. All right, we're not getting into that. I want to speak to... And I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Is it Leo? Leo, Leo? Leo. Leo let me ask you a question, because uh, you ran something called The Project, which you described as a sexually liberating service. Would you please explain The Project to our guests tonight? I think it was more sexually liberating. Basically, it was a theater where people would submit their fantasies. And I was as surprised as anybody here would be as how many fantasies of submission and domination, primarily submission, came into us. They would be dramatized by a core of actors without any nudity, without any crude language, to try to extract the essence of what this sexuality is all about. And I think there's been a tremendous misunderstanding here. As an excellent broadcaster, you've created a wonderful rodeo of excitement around this subject. But it really is a very personal and private form of sickness. Yes, Dr. Van Hogg, I agree. It is a sickness, but it is an incurable sickness. Many is it people... a sickness that's dangerous, Leo? No. I'll tell you, it's let me put it this to way. Other people. It is dangerous to drive a car. There are so few accidents compared to the number of drivers on the street that, no, you can't say that we have to abolish driving. It's the same thing with sadomasochism. Basically, what sadomasochism is, is a desire for something unusual. All of us have different sexualities here. Each of us likes something a little bit different during lovemaking. Some people, unfortunately for them, want something quite different. And they have no outlet. Their wives, their husbands don't understand. There's nothing they can do about this except go to an AVA and pay $200 an hour and have it accommodated. Because there is no cure, Dr. Vandenhoek. No, you I should know this better let, than let I. Me make there it is no enough. cure for this. So what are they to do? No, Suppress I, this? I don't disagree. I, in fact, I'd associate with a parental figure or something like that. Forgive my interruption. I believe, I'm quite sure I know, that many of these, let's, let's just keep it with men and women, say that it's the man who wants it, because that happens to be Usually. the most prevalent. A man would love to have his wife play, let's say, a dominant role. But because he knows deep down that she is turned off by this, she probably has submissive fantasies too. She wants to have a strong, nice, I doubt. I, I think no, it's no, no, a male no. thing. Oh, it's I think easy, it's easier. Age, I think in this day and age with the women's lib movement and everything, every guy's married to a dominant woman anyhow. <laughs> 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 I believe that the man would very, very much Mr. like Anderson, to... What happens when that individual May I finish? Takes... No, no, I'd like to sure, hear your question, sure. let me finish. Okay. The man would very much like to play out these fantasies with his loved one, but he knows that she doesn't like that. Therefore, that's a turnoff. You don't want to have sex with your wife if you think she doesn't like it. You'll go somewhere where you, you have some... No, I won't, them. miss. I will, I will not go somewhere else, okay? There are people in this country who are loyal to their families, loyal to their wives. There are people Steve, in this country have who have wife. moral standards that apparently you don't you abide by. No, but my question is this. What happens when a father goes into one of your sex slimy dens and gets it off the way that you say they do and takes home what he learned from you people. Now, for example, First of all, let me I want you. to, let me finish, let me I finish, do not I want to give you the entire, I want to give you the entire question. Testimony. 
My father, who got his ideas from magazines with S&M pictures and stories, hung me upside down in a closet and pushed objects like screwdrivers or table but knives up my retreat. Boy, you got a big mouth. This is Would nonsense. you calm down? It's non-nonsense, It's non-nonsense. It's non-nonsense, all right? Go ahead. What He's happens? equating sticking screwdrivers up a little girl yes, with a cop shooting that. himself. Where the that's hell? a horror. That's a you're horror. Damn right it's you're a horror. So you can misuse any. That was the point. this industry of there are cops. Is adding Did you ever hear of police brutality? Anything oh, can be misused on, from donuts to booze Al, to car to driving. And who are you to tell those people who want to practice their fantasies they can't do it? And who, are you to tell, who are you to tell that father he can't shove a screwdriver no, up? I'll tell you who the hell that is. It's a human being. He has a I want to momentarily go back to our to our two uh, submissive guests uh, behind the screen. Mr. X, you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, Mort, a minute or two ago you said that this was only a men's issue. I can tell you that there's a tremendous number of women out there with submissive fantasies who have a hard time talking to them with their partner. There was a time in my life, although I am submissive, I can talk about the whole subject and act out the dominant role in a caring way if that's what a woman wants. And I met quite a few women. They just wanted someone who would tie them up and tease them, and they were afraid to talk about it to their partner. Another example is the recent movie, Nine and a Half Weeks. Not necessarily a very good movie, but a tremendous number of women alone or in groups went to see it. It's a female submissive movie, and it was the only thing around they could see. Dr. Uh, Van Hogg, you've, you've been listening to all of this. How would you react if uh, some rag like Al offered you an evening with Ms. Terrell free of charge? What would you do? I would decline. <laughs> also, also, if it's just conversation, I would not mind at all. It might be pleasant. But uh, you like to make those little sex telephone calls where you hear people talk dirty to you like it. that? Huh? Let me point out: to do this, you have to have a specific kind of personality formed in early infancy. You must either have overwhelming guilt feelings that make you feel liberated when you're beaten and tortured, or you must have perhaps witnessed intercourse among your parents and being a small child <coughs> perceived it as though daddy is beating up ma uh, mommy and try to imitate it, all kinds of disturbance. The point is, uh, the reason I regard it as a disease is that the people who are involved in this, although they get temporary relief, otherwise they wouldn't do it, they get some temporary satisfaction, on the whole, they're very unhappy people. Have you ever, you've never done anything like that? I already asked. No, but I've married people like that. Are you married? No. Have you ever had sex? <laughs> <laughs> Years ago in Buffalo, I don't remember. Years ago in <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> home, home on the range. Mr. Y, Mr. Y, let's, uh, let's behind uh, the green door there, let me ask you. You and Ava are alone in a room. What exactly do you ask for, and how do you ask? <coughs> I kneel before my mistress, and I kiss her hand. You kneel before your mistress. And I kneel, and if she asks me to point to her toes, I kiss her toes. What happens after that is up to my mistress. She may reward me with pain. She may punish me with pain. Different reasons entirely. What is the reward with pain? What is that? What In my particular case, it's the cane. She, she, likes the, she likes the cane. Cane. It's more painful than a whip. All right. That's a reward, right? What that if she wants a reward? to punish? What if she wants to punish you with pain, Mr. Y? How, what does she do? What kind of pain does she inflict then? The same thing. Same thing. How do you know if it's a punishment or a reward? The mentality yeah. behind it is different. What? The mentality behind it is different. The strokes might be the same, hand. but what I will say and I do to him it. within between is different. It's very important that you alternate the pain with soft caresses, a lot of tenderness, a lot of hugging. And if you leave that out, it's not the same. If you really want to punish Lord, someone, you're you not as tender. Holy shit! Question. This is as sick as anything I've Lord. ever heard. <laughs> Lord, I mean, that's sick. 
<laughs> Mort, Mr. Weirdo, if you could ask him a question back there. I'm concerned about the children in his uh, household. Now, what happens if his child comes home uh, and, and sees him or witnesses uh, marks on him? How does he explain to his child? He only pays $200 an hour, so that means he's going to the lady's home. If he paid $300 an hour, he'd be going to his. That's what my, that's what my research shows. He is not my client anymore. He has become my personal love slave, which is something quite different. He becomes your personal love slave? That's quite different. And he does windows. What about if, if your kid sees you as a cop playing with your gun? I mean, that's, more, that's a more violent image than something sexual. You know, Al, uh, what is about, women, come, it, women come to me also and search for advice. Many women call and come for consultations so they can learn about this and bring this to their relationships with their boyfriends or husbands. They come to learn. There are many women out there that are eager to learn. But all right, I, I, I want to talk. You do this, damn it, you, you know, all the it. experts in the world haven't proven a damn thing except I still think it's sick, all right? I find that the experts are in the audience. We're going to speak to you. I want to, I want to, wait a second now. Wait a second. I want to know two things. Is this healthy? And if you think it's healthy, or even if you don't think it's healthy, do you have a fantasy of your own? Tell your fantasy, and I'll tell mine. Next. There you go. Let me, let me go to the folks in the audience. All right, again, I ask you, if you have a fantasy, let us know what the fantasy is. Ma'am, your first name. My name is Helen. Hey, I have Helen. a store in New York where I sell all these things. What's I it sell called? Come Again. Come Again. I knew I shouldn't have asked. And, and you you when you say you sell all these things, we sell. I sell lingerie, adult toys, books. Adult toys, like what? What are adult toys? Vibrators, dildos, Vibrators, dildos. whips, <laughs> chains, like the whip you were using. Uh-huh. You were getting very attached to it. You cutie, you naughty little girl, you sell bad things. You I don't. I, you're I sell them. You're using yourself? What I do is in my private got, life. I know. Is, is that how you private. got into selling this stuff? Or were, did you just know there were a lot of perverts who really dug those vibrating, twisting dildos and things? You're good at words, aren't you, yeah. Mort? Mm -hmm. No, I am here to sell things so people can live out their fantasies. In all fact, right. I made a video catalog so uh -huh. people can see how all the toys work and what to do with them. And the catalog demonstrates what to do with them? That's right. There are a couple how much does the catalog, so, catalog sell for? 1995. Okay, I can't even see it. <laughs> right. How about it, pal? I'll tell you more. These people, they got to be crazy to spend $200 to get beat. They can come over to my house, I'll do it for free. What's your first name? Sharon. Hi, Sharon. How, How are you? How are you doing? Yeah. I just want to say that I think this S&M is really sick, and I think if you can't be satisfied by your husband, that's a real shame these days. Do you have any fantasies of your own? Not like theirs. <laughs> Share a fantasy with us. I'm just wondering what's in the candy dish. <laughs> You're wondering what's in the yeah. candy dish? Dirty cigarettes. <laughs> I have a question for Ava. All right, question, question for Ava. All right, Ava, Ava Ava's blowing it. it Ava is. hates cigarettes and cigars, so they're giving her a little sadomasochism right there. <laughs> an excitement for her. Ava, uh, most man. of the men come to you as masochists, do they? Pardon, I uh, Most of the men come to you uh, as masochists? Well, you might be submissive and not a masochist, okay, and you might be a masochist without being submissive. Sadicist. It's two, they're two different things. A submissive man wants to merely submit to your will, to be controlled by you, while well, a masochist might enjoy pain, which a submissive man might not necessarily. All right, well, Ava, Ava, but what he's saying is, and I think too, do you yourself get your jollies out of beating the hell out of these guys? <laughs> huh? I do. Is that a little fun? And if you didn't I mean, is that a little fun? You get a little moist, Would you go huh? out to a person like yourself to get it? I do find a very exciting thrill by doing it, but I do it with a lot of love, and I think it's very important to have love, love behind pain. <laughs> okay, pal. Yeah. It's a free country, Mort. Yeah. And these people if they can get three hundred dollars an hour to do this, beautiful. God bless them. But when you start slipping each other Mickeys, I gotta draw the line here. This is a little out of control. I mean, what's the point? What's the hamster point? 
Where does it work? What is a Mickey? A Mickey, you know. That... <laughs> well, he's, ask, he's asking an intelligent question. Why the hamsters? Why the what's, people have fantasies? I mean, oh, gerbils, and, gerbils, and, hamsters. And where, where, what school does she teach at again? And NYU. I don't teach, no, no, no. I, I went don't to NYU. No, no. Figures. I gave. Uh -huh. I have lectured it, at NYU. I am not the teacher at NYU. I have lectured there to a class of students. I've been an invited guest lecturer. That's different. Independent to students studies because more. because some <laughs> sicko perverted professor gets his rocks off watching that. Bonus right? round. Yeah. Well, I feel people can do what they want behind their closed doors, but when it comes out and affects the public, I think it's a problem there. Now, they said earlier that there's no, you can't go for counseling, you can't go for, to a psychiatrist like the doctor here and, you know, maybe get cured. Can they get cured, you doctor? Cured. I, I think it can be mitigated. Cured is a very doubtful matter. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have to say this, although it gives them temporary relief, to go to, say, this lady, and also uh, makes the matter more, more permanent. It's just as, as though an alcoholic gets It reinforces it, like it, their it need it for it, is what you're days. saying. On any fantasies of your own that you have? <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. What's if, your... if Ava wants to go home with me after the show, it might take it. Ava, you got, yeah? a, you got a customer. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stand by. Do you ever feel like the whole world's going mad? Well, now it has with Mort After Dark. Two hours of my very best every Saturday night at 11.30. I wanted Leo to, I wanted Leo to have uh, some comments. If you had some comments, I wanted you to make them. Yes, Mort, I would like to say that in my 15 years of researching this subject, I have never once heard of screwdrivers or gerbils. <laughs> In 15 years of trying to help people understand this form of sexuality, which is very poignant to only those who have it, there's no way that an hour show can help spread some light on it. But I'm afraid that what's happened this evening is prejudices have merely been reinforced by jokes and... You know, I've been doing uh, radio for only five years, all right? And in the five years I was doing radio before I started television, I had six different cases with doctors and people, all right? I won't say whether they were heterosexual or homosexual on who used the gerbil routine, only they didn't use the paper tube, they used glass tubes, all right, laboratory tubes that these gerbils ran up. And the doctors had to take care of them to take out dead gerbils, you know. I mean, that's, it's, a, it's a pretty, I, I'm sorry you've been working on it for 15 years and haven't heard about it. I've been doing radio for five and I've heard about it six different times. I wish I could believe that. I, I don't care if you believe it, it's what happened. Simply uh, to conclude, number one, she mentioned something about a spiritual problem, indeed the farther away we get from the Judeo-Christian concept that our founding fathers gave us, the worse things are going to get. Number two, I ask these people to give those of us in law enforcement the ability to do our job and to put these nuts behind bars where they are. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Al the last word. All right. I don't like what Al, I don't like what Al stands for. All right. But I'll fight for his right to say it in this country. All right. But I think you're slime. Thank you. Let me just say it. Okay. Listen, every everyone out there in the TV audience and in, in the audience, you you exercise your individuality every day with the clothing you wear whether you do grass or don't you, what ice cream flavors you pick, whether you're fat or thin, as long as you're not hurting another being. When I hear tales of, of, of children abused, it's a horror to me. All of us, it's a horror to. The issues are for those people who want to practice their own sexuality in their own homes, they're consenting adults. America's a free country. Uh, it, 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 the freedom of the United States, the individuality is what makes us great. Mort Downey can be on, uh, on this station, and he can, he can deliver his message. You listen. You reject ideas you don't like. You listen to my United States unique that makes us different than Russia and, and Iran entails choices. And if you're going to have yeah. Dudley Do-Right make those decisions hey, for you, we can, you're in trouble. We can listen to this garbage all night long, gang, all right? We can listen to it. There is sickness out there. There are people who need help, and uh, maybe some of them are at home. We wish you the best. Right now, and maybe some are in the audience, right? You, sweetheart, with the big mouth, all right, with small brain. What I do suggest, however, is that we get together and create a fund to save the gerbils. Good night, everybody.